Our constant attempts to get rid of fear are a battle that we are actually never going to win. The 3D notion of strength is having everything under control and having control over things. In reality, though, our awareness of our fears is ever present because our mind always seeks for ways to defend itself. One of the prime directives of our subconscious mind is to keep us alive, to keep us safe. When we are doing things over a long period of time, it doesn't distinguish between it being good or bad for us. All it knows is that we are still alive, ergo it believes that we should keep doing it. That's why whenever we are trying to introduce something new, it tries to pull us back to the old. Most things work in the paradox of what we have been taught they do work. When we are focusing on getting rid of our fears or our fears, it doesn't really matter because the focus still remains on the very same thing, which is the fear. Instead, we need to look beyond it and see what it actually represents and then focus on the actual truth. I see it in the work with my clients all the time, whether it's fears around our sexuality, our self-expression, or simply stepping out of the box and following our path. It seems that we are holding on to those anxieties often because they can sometimes, in actuality, make us feel alive and make us feel like we are a productive part of society because, after all, everyone has it, so why shouldn't we? Everything we continuously do gives us something in return. When we are looking at some of these underlining reasons for our fears, then it's rather easy to see why getting rid of them is a difficult task. However, the task has never been to remove it. It has been to transcend it, to look beyond it and to understand that your true power is your spiritual power. It seems really hard for us to understand that we are perfect just as we are and that everything in this life unfolds in divine order and through our higher self that sits in the driving seat. Through media and society, we are constantly programmed to look at faults within ourselves and to seek some kind of fake perfection that makes us feel like we aren't enough. It is the double standards and morals in our world that makes us really sometimes go cuckoo and create fears that actually wouldn't be there. We promote self-love nowadays more than ever, but hey, do not love yourself too much because then you could be potentially arrogant and selfish. We tell people embrace your sexuality, but do not go into this direction because then you would be considered something else. Especially this constant battle between the sexes is really crazy. Women complain when they are objectified, yet we do use our beauty to attract men. Men on the other side judge gold diggers, yet use their wealth to get women. Instead of blaming and pointing fingers at each other, why don't we just call it as it is? A simple natural dance of polarity. My a little bit exaggerated examples, but also not really exaggerated examples, are simply there to show you how easy it is for us to get disconnected from our own true self, our true power for who we are. In the past, fears were necessary to protect ourselves from wild animals, from attacks in the tribes. Nowadays, those are more internalized and can therefore create much more damage. Whenever fears come up for you, create awareness, step outside of them. What we often tend to do is identify ourselves with those fear. But when you can step back and observe, create awareness about the actual fear, it will truly help you to look beyond it. What is it trying to protect you from? And what is it really giving you are two questions that are a great start. As I stated earlier, we are subconsciously always going to be aware of our fears because every prime directive of any species here on Earth is survival. 
but it truly is what we do with it that makes all the difference. That's why it's all about making your right decisions from your heart despite any fears or anxieties kicking in. Having the courage to do so and also not fearing the consequences of your decisions and actions. It again always goes back to self trust, trusting our own self, our abilities, but also the divine guidance. And trust again is the foundation of our confidence.